Most of the items we have been making on our countdown to Christmas are good gift items for the home or for somebody on your Christmas giving list. Today, let's make something for that blacksmith on your list. Maybe that's you. Let's make a decorative punch that can be used in your work, and we'll use this punch on a project in an upcoming video once it's complete. This item was suggested by Glenn Everett. And the punch we're going to make today is kind of a classic blacksmith's decorative punch. You see punches like this quite often. They're typically fairly round, but they're divided into lobes. And this gives sort of a floral effect. And I think if you divide it in uneven lobes, it looks better. And then these, these are all filed and shaped kind of like flower petals even though it's not literally any specific flower. So we'll do that, and I think I'll leave a little raised center in the middle of it. It wouldn't hurt to have similar punches in multiple sizes, because quite often they can be used together to create overall patterns. But we're just going to make one so you can see how it's done. And then, as I said, we'll use it in a later project that I have in mind, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. I'm starting with a piece of S7 tool steel, just because I like S7. Use whatever you have on hand. You can make this out of old car coil spring, 4140. Anything that is hardenable and will hold up under use should be just fine. This piece is 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, 8 inches long, and I'm going to go for a punch end of about 3 eighths of an inch diameter, maybe half inch. I'm not going to be real picky about it because it doesn't have to fit anything. So this is just your regular old taper. We draw out a lot of tapers in this project series, it looks like. You want to take this down to about the size square that you want the round to be. And I like a fairly long, graceful taper on tools like this. Depends on how skinny it's going to get, but this one will be plenty stout for what it is. Now, the S7 does not work well cold. As it cools down to this range, you got to get it hot again. Of course, for that matter, any hardenable steel is a lot harder to work and a lot more susceptible to stress damage if you work it at a low heat. But steels like S7 and H13 really need much higher heats for forging. We want square, now octagon and round. And that leaves me with an end that I'm happy with. And it's right at 3 eighths. I just want to make sure that's a nice flat point. You can certainly file it or grind it. We'll end up doming it more as we work on this, but I just want to make sure there's no real hollow spots on it. And it's okay to knock the corners off just a little bit. Now we're going to go to the vise and start using punches and chisels to create this punch. And because I leave these kind of long, I can actually support this on the screw box down there. Or the protective cover for the vice screw, I should say. And then I don't drive it all the way down through the vice while I'm working on it. So I'm just creating a little center hollow point right now, which will be a raised center in the finished impression. Sort of like making an eyeball punch. You'd be lucky to get one, one little detail at a time on this. And 
Now to create this center depression, I first made a mark with a center punch. Then I'm using a little ball in punch. I'm trying to keep it as centered as I can, but a little bit of off-center and quirkiness is okay. Now I'm going to try and divide this with a chisel into five relatively equal lobes. And you can do a lot of this with a file or a small rotary tool. I don't know if you can get a cutting disc small enough for most die grinders or not, but the one on a Dremel or something like that would probably work. And as you cut deeper, tip towards the outside, and that helps create a little wider gap there with your chisel because you don't really um, lost my train of thought because you don't want it real deep in the center but you want it fairly well defined and opened up some on the outside everything else that needs to be done here I will do with a file which brings up another problem with using air hardening steels. And that is that if I just let this air cool, obviously it's going to harden and I'm not going to be able to file it. For non-air hardening steels, I would typically cool in vermiculite. And that's sort of a crude way to anneal things. And it's a lot softer than even normalizing an air would be. But air hardening steels cooled in vermiculite are still remarkably hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat the vermiculite with a couple of one inch square bars let them soak in the vermiculite. Then I'll bring this up to temperature, put it in there, remove the square bars, put it so it's down in the hot vermiculite, and hopefully I'll be able to cut it with a file. If not, I might go to something like a Dremel to finish this with. But I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to go to lunch, and we'll come back and visit this in a little bit. So I've got my vermiculite nice and preheated here with these bars. I'm going to leave them in there. I might as well serve a purpose. I'm going to bury that down in there and let it cool as slowly as I can. Like I say, it's still not a proper annealing job in S7 that would take overnight. So I've let this as cool as slowly as I reasonably can without making it an overnight process. Hopefully it's soft enough to file. We'll find out here pretty quickly. And I'm just going to clean these up. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I think a triangular file's not bad. And at the outer edges, I'm going to kind of roll them all, the little slots over here. Just to kind of round them up on the outside. Screech, screech. And if you did this with a chisel neatly, there's just almost no cleanup to do here at all. Just this final refinement. There's still some vermiculite packed down in here. But that's a, a round depression that will be a raised center on a little flower-like element here. Hopefully my hands aren't in your way too badly. But I think that's really all I need to do to that. I'm going to want to just lightly clean up the surface just to make sure it doesn't have any really ragged spots or things that will just be sharp lines. But I think we're done. Now we should test it to see what it looks like. 
A good way to test a stamp like this is just in a hunk of lead. That way you don't have to worry about hardening it and tempering it. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm very happy with that. I suppose for something like this to really show up well, I'm going to need a macro lens for my camera, but I don't have one, so hopefully you can see that in the image. That's exactly what I was going for. So now it's time to harden and temper our stamp. But I think you're just going to have to trust me on that one. This is made from S7 tool steel. That's a shock resisting tool steel. It's an air hardening tool steel. Now to guarantee really good results in the hardening and the tempering, I'll do this in an electronic oven, bring it up to heat slowly. That process takes a few hours. The whole chisel will be hot enough to harden. I will then stand it up in my bucket of vermiculite so this area that's struck cools much more slowly than the, the top end, and that should give me an end that won't damage my hammer. I'll then temper it. The whole process is going to take me three or four hours. It'd be about five minutes worth of actual video time to show the important parts of that process, but I won't do that till tomorrow. So to be able to publish this video tonight, I'm going to go ahead and call this quits. You'll have to trust me on the hardening and tempering. Now a punch like this does not need to be made out of S7. I just keep a nice supply of S7 rod on hand for making tools like this. Coil spring would be an excellent choice for something like this. 4140 would be just fine. Then you'd also have the option of normalizing, which would speed this process up. And those are perhaps steels that are a little bit easier to harden in the average blacksmith shop if you don't have a temperature controlled heat treat furnace. But in any case, I will try to get this hardened and tempered tomorrow. That way it'll be ready to use for one of our upcoming projects. And I'll show you what that is when we get to it. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Then make time in your day to watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But as always, try to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one. If you would like to support Black Bear Forge on YouTube, there are links in the description to both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free and will remain free.